first we're gonna start off with a welder but before that you'll notice a bunch of these tools on the list are actually getting pretty old really the point of the video is to show you the tools that i actually use and if they broke i'd be happy enough to go buy them again just even get a chicago electric pick up the vulcan and do every process or maybe even a titanium heck doesn't matter just get one and get started welding now speaking of a well-used tool the central pneumatic eight gallon air compressor now i kept this one in here even though harbor freight does not actually carry this exact model anymore they've moved on to the mcgraw now i do think that there are two things that help this sucker just keep going and going and that would be First, it is not an oilless compressor. So I've drained it once or twice and just made sure that the oil level is correct. And then also that the drain down on the bottom for the sediment and condensate, that that is checked regularly. Those two things will save your tank and the piston and will just help it keep going on and on. Allen or a T-Hex if you want to be proper. Now I like this set because it has both the SAE and the metric along with a nice little holder and the best part is they are the T-handle and so then you're not ripping apart your palm as you're trying to loosen or tighten hex nuts. Zip ties. Definitely worth it to pick up a bag or two while you're waiting in the aisle. A Predator generator and this is one of the smaller ones pretty much just to keep my refrigerator and freezer going in case the power goes out. I don't care that it's not the super quiet ones because really it's just a backup, so I'm fine with it. More importantly, I want it to start up every time, which it has thus far. A socket set. I like both the quarter inch drive and the three eighths. And really, if you find the right size, you're not gonna strip out the bolt. And as far as this set goes, whether you care, the uh, bigger three eighths is actually a 12 point and the smaller quarter inch is a six point. I found the extendable ratchet to actually be pretty sweet. Now they do have two extendable types. One of them is just a regular three eighths and the other one comes with both a quarter inch and a three eighths socket. So if you got the quarter inch and the three eighths, you now got the best of both sets. The Pittsburgh one and a half ton automotive racing jack. You know, they call it the racing jack because I think it can get all the way up in like three or four pumps. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, I do like that it is the extra low profile. That's nice, has come in handy sometimes. But either way, uh, the one and a half ton is perfect for my car. For the SUV, you're going to need to bump it up to something a bit bigger, possibly the three ton earthquake impact now this actually uh was a first generation i picked it up the very first year that they came out with it uh, there's no uh, model number anywhere listed i do got a serial number but uh, model number is not there so if it did break i would go pick up any earthquake impact with a half inch socket i like that the best and it's really the best overall i would say socket size for the projects that i have since we're on a central pneumatic kick, I would pick up the hose reel and then also, in addition, pick up the air tool accessory kit. It's not that much more to pick up the entire kit and you get all of these extra adapters and a blowgun. I've got three of the big organizers and then two of the smaller ones and they really are great. Just for holding all of those little nuts and bolts and odds and ends that you forget about that you had and then you go to the store and buy it anyway. I like for the bigger one that you can actually take out those little buckets and move it around or, you know, if you get a couple, you can mix and match. And then for the smaller one, the dividers you can take out and make those as big or small as you want as well. Hammers! They're like only five bucks, so pick up one for you and one for the kid. And, I mean, we're not really building houses here, so you no need to go out and buy a $400 hammer. These levels really aren't too bad, and so they're great for obviously checking level, plumb, and flatness. A painter's knife. This is seriously one of my top five multi-tools that I love. It's got so many different features and a must-have for any DIYer. Uh, they don't actually sell this one anymore. I think it's the Quinn. Either way, most painter knives are pretty universal, and so pick one up. 
I might have just a little uh, problem with angle grinders. Who can help it when they're only 10 bucks, am I right? So I've got a couple Drill Master Warrior. This was actually my very first angle grinder going on almost 20 years. It's the Chicago Electric. Uh, they don't have that one anymore. Now I have so many, so then I can just keep one attachment on there and I'm not having to switch in between mid-project. So whether it's a grinder disc, a uh, wire wheel, flapper disc, cutoff wheel, whatever it is, so pick up one or six of them. I found another one that was hiding. Bar clamps and C-clamps. Now, honestly, I designed my welding table around these bar clamps. They're cheap, worth it, and hey, they get the job done. I never thought that I would start collecting another brand. And that is until Hercules comes out with their five-year warranty. They're coming out with awesome tools. And at about half the price, it's kind of hard to pass up. Now, I'm not totally converting to Hercules, but they are pretty sweet. Now, for most DIYers, you're probably not going to need yet another angle grinder, right? We've already picked some up. So what I would actually suggest is getting the circular saw in place of the angle grinder, unless you do have a bunch of metalworking projects coming up. Go pick up the cheap orange handled set. This is one of the cheapest and has the most variety in it, but I actually love these for the smaller ones. And then just as a great overall set after that, um, I've actually tend to really like this new uh, green handled set. I, I think it's Pittsburgh as well, but there's quite a few that come in that set and it seems to be a pretty good range uh, to fit everything I need. Oh, I might have more lights than angle grinders. Yes, those are also skeletons hiding up in the attic. If you can find a deal or they're on sale, they're worth picking up. Nitrile gloves, they are great. Uh, I usually use the five mil for the small little stuff, you know? And if you're doing anything more than painting, well, pick up the nine mil. These things are great. And you may not have ever realized, but they actually have textured fingertips for better grip, they say. Not just any welding gloves, but TIG welding gloves. They are typically made out of a thinner, um, typically goat skin, a thinner leather. And so the dexterity that you get is just that much better. I love it. And since we got welding gloves, why not throw in uh, some welding pliers? Now this is as far as a yet another multi-tool, not necessarily just for welding. Lots of stuff on this one. I think it's a seven in one. No tool set is complete without an open-end wrench set, and like the sockets, these are cheap and they work. And as always, pick up an SAE and metric. 21 degree framing nailer. Who chose that angle? I don't know. Either way. It's definitely on the list of a tool that I don't use that often, but it's really great to have. Now here's a side note you probably didn't know. Uh, back then, Central Pneumatic had what's called a contractor series. So whether they really put that much more or made it that much better i don't know they probably did because this sucker still uh, works great impact sockets now just looking at these cases yeah you might notice they're metal so does that just give you a little idea of how long i've had them they're pretty much bulletproof i don't think i've had any issues i twisted off way too many nuts without uh, doing any damage to the sockets. It's a great idea to have both the SAE and metric in both the deep wall and in the regular just to keep you covered for any situation. The 29 piece drill bit set. I think I'm on my third or fourth one. This is becoming my little Maj Paj one right there. But this, this set really is awesome. Except for metal. If you are doing metal, then pick up the Milwaukee. You'll know, you'll thank me later. The half-inch torque wrench. I've actually been pleasantly surprised that this thing has stayed within calibration. I ended up checking it uh, with a work calibrated one not too long ago, and it was still right on. For a really cheap torque wrench, it's worth picking up. Socket adapters and bit adapters. I've actually had no issues with any impact or even type use with just even their cheap ones so and that is by using a cordless impact driver if you're using a big old air one that you know has the 1800 foot pounds yeah you'll snap these no matter what brand i'd almost guarantee that you're stripping your screws not because of the bit you're using but more so your technique so save a bunch of money get these and then practice your technique 
If you don't need NASA precision, then pick up a pair of these calipers. And, and as a tool tip, I usually take the battery out when not in use, and that's just because it seems to drain it, so I always have a couple extra on hand. Speed squares, I mean, there are tons of videos with all of the little hidden tricks and everything that these guys come with. Uh, in short, I measure 90 degrees with it. Sometimes a 45 if I'm really feeling wild for that day. But I wanna show you this, check this out. So this is a machinist square and check that out. That is dead on and then even the larger one, just dead nuts on. For less than 10 bucks, come on Harbor Freight, you're blowing me away here. Utility knife. Now yeah, the Pittsburgh actually did change to the Gordon. I don't really think it's that big of a deal, but I would actually say save your fastbacks and use it, these guys for all of your dirty jobs. You know, the sprinklers or roofs, that kind of stuff. And for a buck, don't forget the mini at the checkout line. This sucker is really one of my new favorite tools, I guess, in the garage. It makes perfect cuts. Uh, the awesome thing with the stand itself is you can use it with multiple other brands. You can also flip this thing all the way up, put the plate on it and make it a vertical band saw so you can do your little intricate cuts. I don't know, I don't ever really use it for that. And whether you care or not, I actually have a whole nother video on these themselves. Ratchet straps always are on sale. And so, no, well, first, no, these are not the best ones you can get, even at Harbor Freight. But with how cheap these are, they're definitely worth it just to pick up a couple packs and throw them in the truck bed. This multimeter right here, it is actually one of the cheapest, best clamp meters that I've found out there. The Predator engine. It has many other uses being a horizontal shaft. It's awesome. You know, your tiller, snowblower, whatever you got, it will work for it as long as it's, you know, the same size and mounting as the engine you previously had. The spring assortment kit. Now this actually goes hand in hand with the go-karts. I picked this set up like 20 years ago, still have plenty left, but I use this on my go-karts as a return spring for the throttle. If you are using it for a throttle return, the stiffer the better. Another two for one, a plug tester and a non-contact tester. These two are essential for any electrical type work, perfect for DIYers. All you do is you simply push the button and if you get close to power, that's live, it will beep. So don't touch it or stick your fingers in here. So here we go for the plug tester. You stick it in, nothing. Well, we don't have power, let's turn it on. Those two lights light up, great. That means that it is correctly wired and we've got power, so we're good to go. The roofing nailer is my number one requested tool to borrow. I actually picked this one up with my framing nailer back when I did my shed, so I've had this for 15 years. Um, I didn't see if this was the contract, oh, yep. It is a contractor series yet again. Whether that's helped prolong the life, maybe they really will, were built to last, I believe it because this sucker has seen many roofs and it's still kicking just fine. I like this one for two reasons. It's 10 gauge so it can run my welder, which was the main purpose why I got it. And then second of all, it's actually got a three plug. So in case there's something else like a grinder I need plugged in, I got two extra plugs for it. It's a shop's tool and it goes up and down. So what else could you ask for? Harbor Freight actually has a great selection of casters. I've used them on tables, stands, carts, all kinds of stuff. And surprisingly, they work pretty good. And did you know Harbor Freight had their own plumber's tape? Yeah, pick up this box like I did 15 years ago and you'll never run out. Had a buck a piece, just pick up some safety glasses, except I don't know, those are dirty and I do not like the yellow pair. So they've got clear and the tinted. The paint sprayer. Now, would I do my car with it? Maybe, no, no, I definitely would not do my car with it. But for all the odd and end projects or let's just say a playhouse, worked great. The drill master, but not a drill. It's a, it's a heat gun. Yes, this is definitely one of those tools that you don't use very often, but it really comes in handy. And this sucker actually works pretty well. Just don't let your wife use it as a hairdryer. 
And coming in at number 50, you probably already guessed it, it's the Titanium 125. Now, the welding table is awesome if you don't already have one. You know, I built my own, so of course you always see that in my videos because I like it. Now the Titanium 125, I've done many other videos on it, so watch those if you want to see it in action or if you want to see the setup itself. It can really do anything that is within the specs of the machine. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, we'll see you next time.